Kia ora and welcome to another episode of Rural New Zealand. I'm your host Scotty Bamford. Join me as we go check out what's happening in the rural communities. On this week's episode we journey over to the Wheat Sheaf Tavern. We discuss farm succession with Mark from Harman Lawyers. But first we check out a clothing company that's making a name for itself right here in Canterbury. Okay, so today we're down at Cactus Clothing. We're going to go check out their amazing products. Hey Rob, how's it going? G'day Scotty, how are you? Oh, I can't complain. Nice. So, so Cactus, tell me a bit about the history. Uh, well, Cactus has been going um, a bit over 20 years now. Um, we manufacture a whole range of products. Um, um, all, almost all are made here in New Zealand. Um, if you'd like, I'll give you a tour around. Yeah, shall we go check out some of your, your products? Yep, sure, cool. follow me. These um, are probably one of our main product lines. Mm -hmm. um, we make um, a really heavy duty canvas pant. Um, in a whole bunch of different styles. Uh, a wider cut, slim cut, um, trade cut. Um, they're made of a really heavy duty canvas, um, giving them extraordinary durability. Um, fantastic for trades and for on the farm. So can you sort of tailor make these, these pans and stuff? Oh, we've got our um, own machine shop here, so we can definitely um, organised hemming for you. Um, if you want a real custom pair, it can be done. It um, takes about four weeks. Um, we need you to come in and get all your measurements to get it sorted. Um, if you're online, you can look at our sizing charts um, and, and pick it up that way as well. So what makes the fabric so good? Um, it's, it's a canvas, um, which means the way it's woven, it's really strong. Um, it's also um, blended, so we've got a polyester in there, um, along with a cotton, about 50-50. Um, basically, that gives exceptional durability for the weight of the fabric. Um, it also means um, it holds only half the amount of moisture as your denim or your standard cotton and that kind of means it'll dry like four times as fast. Cool. Um, perfect for the outdoors. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and you can get thicker grades as well? Oh yeah, certainly. Um, we have, uh, uh, this is a 12, um, we can go down to 8 which is lighter again and then we have a special grade which is called premium which is a, a really heavy duty 12. So Rob, I saw these mountain jackets over here, they look pretty heavy duty. Um, yeah, they're a heavy duty, um, waterproof, breathable fabric. Um, are basically applicable for anyone standing in the rain. Um, the catch with waterproof breathables is there's tons of them out there, but to get them in a heavier weight, enough fabric that can handle real use, uh, that's pretty rare on the market these days. Yeah, because it would be great on the farm, wouldn't it? With, you know, oh, in mate, case you hit the old barbed wire fence, it's going to stand up more it, than a, in a it, other, other jacket. It'll certainly stand up more than another jacket. Um, the, the main thing is that it'll handle grime and dirt um, a lot better than most other waterproof jackets. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is. Um, our down jacket, which we released this year. Uh, we have two styles. We have a, a synthetic style, um, and then we have a canvas covered down jacket. Uh, this synthetic um, doesn't soak up any water. Um, it's a really tough fabric. There's a little video on YouTube you can go check out about it being dragged along the ground, put oh, over yeah. some barbed wire fences. Okay, um, and then we, so this thing here, it's super warm. Um, this thing here is a step up above it again. This has got an, a canvas exterior over a down jacket. I mean, good for a t-shirt, minus 15, running away from a bear in Canada. Yeah, wow. Well, you know, well. one tough jacket. Yeah. And that's the same as the, all the other products. I mean, it's not going to rip, is it? Because that's, that's the problem you have with down jackets, is they're not sort of built that tough, and you just like, nick rose bushes yeah. and whatnot, and right. you're like, ah. Oh. Yeah, this, the, both of these, are, these are, are really tough. This one here, I mean, exceptionally tough. Even if you manage to tear the exterior of this, which should be trying really hard to do, it doesn't actually rip into the down component. So you can get a hole without the down flying everywhere. Oh, awesome. That's cool. Sweet. Oh, well, should we uh, check out uh, the people behind the scenes who do all the sewing and whatnot? Yeah, let's go check them out. Cool. Welcome to our little production facility out the back here. Um, we um, have this unit here that produces for us. They produce a heck of a lot of stuff. We also have um, two or three other places uh, around New Zealand that make product for us. Um, they're kept pretty busy in here. I bet, I bet. What are these guys working on at the moment? Um, at the moment, um, they're working on um, production for uh, some custom work for Antarctic New Zealand. Oh, wow. uh, um, we do uh, a reasonable amount of um, specialised custom work uh, along with our um, standard product. So Rob, once everything gets made in the workshop, this is where all the products come? Yep, they come out here to our, our little warehouse um, and then um, they're dispatched. Um, 
they either end up back out in our front shop out there where they're sold to the general public, anyone can come in. Um, we're here at Christchurch, 90 for Sherald Ave. Um, if you're rural, um, we've got a great internet service and you can just order online and then they're dispatched dispatch from here um, to New Zealand and the rest of the world. Oh wow, so yeah. do you get quite a few people buying from outside, outside mm, New Zealand? Yeah, it's, it's really good at the moment for us with the dollar um, being the way it is. Yeah, yeah we've had a lot of uh, interest. Um, we always do. Um, a, a lot of American interest um, and Australian interest as well. Yeah, it's great. If you guys at home are interested in the Cactus products, you can come down to the Fitzgerald Ave showroom or you can buy online. Yep, Harry Meyer, we're in an equity partnership here at uh, on the north bank of the Waimak River, just 14 k south of Oxford, and uh, we've been here 10 years now, um, wintering 800 cows. Wow. I'm real, really, really keen on having my staff go through the system, but it's got to work for them. Okay, um, that's a bloody waste of time trying to uh, trying to teach people if their eyes are just going to glaze over. Okay, um, but bear in mind that. We don't all want to own six dairy farms. Some of us just want to go home and turn the bloody um, t idiot box on and pull the curtains at, at um, five o'clock at night or whatever it is, you know. So, so we've got to do tailor what we do to suit the individual. And some of them are driven, but we're not all going to be chiefs, and that's just how it works. So um, I'm a real fan of sticking folks through Ag ITO if it works for them. We have a talk about where they think they're at and, uh, and uh, choose courses as, as appropriate that fit. And um, yeah, look, I'm, I'm probably a little bit selfish, Scott. I, if I can make it so that they get something out of it, that they think about what they're doing, whether I agree entirely with, like it would be naive to say that everything that's in black and white is all you need to know. So if I can get them to think about what they're learning and compare that to what we're doing on farm, what's the differences, why do we do what we do, what, you know, then, then if I can get them to, to um, do that, then it, in the long run it's got to be easier on me so I can stay home and cuddle mother for longer. So that works for everybody, all right? I've got a whole new crew on, on this year and, uh, and so I'm having to learn their uh, learning styles, if you like, and uh, I, can, I can wave my arms around like a lunatic and that works for some people, but other people like to have drawings. Some of them like written instructions. Some of them I've got to hold their hand and walk them through what we need to do. So it's really important that we have an understanding that, that um, different folks work different ways and uh, and if we can tailor what we want uh, to get done in a way to um, that achieves that then that's good it's not just where well, you go you go and do that see you later it's this is what I want you to do these are the alternative ways that I see of doing it if you can come up with a different one then then after you've done it then that's fine but explain to me why because the why is, is the big thing it's not it's not um, this is the job on your bike, it's it's uh, this is the job. This is where it fits. This is why we're doing it. Why we're trying to achieve what we want to achieve. And if they don't understand the why, then they don't know when there's a cock up, and they can't rectify. They can't. Make, it's important that they make it uh, uh, learn to make a decision. Um, if doing nothing is the best decision, well, that's great. If uh, doing nothing because uh, we don't want to piss Harry off, well, that doesn't excite me at all. Like, you know. Um, so so um, if I can train them to be brave enough to make a call on, on what they think's right and, and do something and justify why they've done it, then that means they've thought about it and I can't argue with it. That's great. And we can offer suggestions about how that might be changed and we can talk about what could have been the alternative ways of dealing with things. But um, hell's bells, if, 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 if I, ITO is a, if, is, a, is a tool I can use to get them to think about what they're doing, how it fits into the big picture, then uh, they can take ownership of their role a lot better. That, that works for me. Stay tuned, because after the break we talk to Mark from Harman Lawyers and we radio in Vince from Iron Man 4x4.
Welcome back to Rural New Zealand. The average farm ownership age is increasing, so now's the time to start thinking about farm succession. Mark Sherry, a partner at Harmon's, uh, been here for about 20 years now, which is quite a long time, and um, a good chunk of my practice is involved in well, an involvement in rural law acting for different types of farmers. Well, farm succession is basically about how you might transfer the farm through from one generation to the next um, in, a, in a way that uh, works for everyone in the family. It's, it's a uh, can be a hot topic sometimes in families and uh, it's, it's something that needs to be planned for if it's going to happen. And uh, what are some of the potential issues with, with the farm takeover? Oh, well, <laughs> the issues, there are a massive number of issues and it, um, the first thing is really the timing. Um, when's it going to happen? When do you start planning for it? Um, then there's actually finance is the big thing. Um, how affordable is it for the family and, um, and whether it's um, something that the farm can actually um, be the economic unit that um, can create the income for more than one family for a period of time. Uh, and you, you obviously you need to know who's going to be taking it over and that in itself can be an issue if there's more than one person interested in doing it. So lot, lots and lots of issues. Someone comes to us and says look we've got um, one of our children looking at taking over the farm, or it might be more than one, basically you need to sit down and plan for it and I don't think, you, I don't think that really it's too soon to start that planning. We've known that people have sort of planned for this even while their children are still at school. Um, and the longer that you leave it, the harder it can actually be to broach topics. Um, we, we know of farming families where children have wanted to take it over. Uh, parents have actually wanted to help kids into the farm, but they actually find it difficult to talk about. Um, so timing, uh, don't be afraid to talk about it too soon. Uh, and, and I think the best approach for getting it underway would be for mum and dad to sit down with their trusted advisors, um, so the lawyers, uh, accountant, and probably the farm advisor too, to, to see how they're going to, to go about this. It, will take, it doesn't just happen overnight, it takes quite a lot of time. If you're in a farming family, and you're just saying to me before that you're one of a couple of kids in your family, for example, um, if you both want to go on the farm, you need to know can, can the farm sustain sort of maybe a new farming partnership of brothers or something like that. Um, but equally, if you've got one that wants to go on the farm and others that um, are off farm, how do you actually balance their interests so that, uh, inheritance wise really, um, so it's a matter of um, being fair and fairness in six farming succession doesn't necessarily mean that people are getting things in equal shares. Um, because often you've got someone who's worked on the farm for a very low pay for a long period of time with the expectation they'll be taking over and, and they've actually built up a lot of the, um, you know, I was going to say goodwill, but it's not, it's not really goodwill, they've, they've, they've put a lot of effort in and the reward for doing that is probably um, the higher um, uh, inheritance that the share that they might get as part of a succession plan. But you can't afford to have brothers and sisters who are off farm um, feeling like they haven't been um, considered or they're being left out as well because that can create huge friction in a family. Uh, and the last thing you want at Christmas time is sort of the grandmother there and not having your grandkids and things around the table because there's been this friction and preferring one child over another. The, the way forward is to um, start the discussion, start it early, um, start it with the right people, so um, being a lawyer involved in this sort of thing, uh, it's important you, uh, you do involve your lawyer. Um, the finance side is critical too, so the accountant having an idea and structure um, is very important. But yeah, don't forget about your farm advisor. If you've got a trusted farm advisor, they're often the person who, who knows the property the best, knows actually what it can, uh, the output might be and whether it is things are workable uh, from a financial point of view and making sure that all, both families will benefit from this uh, and if in doubt um, you do need to say stop, let's take a breath, let's um, let's look at this again because sometimes you have to make the tough call, sometimes it won't work uh, and the trick is actually knowing how to do that.
Uh, we're happy to uh, be involved in this situation. It's often uh, a good sort of work. We've got really qualified people who are able to assist, so people should feel free to give us a call and uh, we're happy to come and meet with them. Okay, we're at the showroom and down here looking at our radio equipment. Now Vince, you've got some good solutions for people out here. Yeah, absolutely. We've uh, got a pretty big range of um, radios, two-way radios that uh, come from uh, Australia, so it's the, the GME product. And um, we start off right with a, uh, a nice little compact handheld um, radio that, that can go in from two right up to five watts, so they're nice and powerful. So. Um, they're uh, 80 channels, so you've got plenty of choices of channels, so you can uh, basically pick your channel, and if someone else is on the same channel, you should be able to talk to them. <laughs> um, and if you go right up to the 5 watt ones, if you've got good clear ground, you can sort of get a range of up to 20 k's, so that's, that's quite good. Um, so these are your handheld type ones. Um, most of them have got a, a three year warranty on them as well, so a great little product, and uh, they are um, dust and waterproof as well, so they're um, a, a nice little no, radio, great for on the farm or yeah. the truck or anything like that. So um, we also do a, a range of truck mounted ones as well. They so seem to be getting pretty small nowadays, yeah, don't they? Yeah, man, they've got compact compared to when they used to be as bigger than your stereo. Yeah. And more powerful for the same size too. So this is a, a little 3120, what they call a TX3120. So again, it's, it's an 80 channel radio. Um, it's a full 5 watt output, so it's a nice strong output radio. Um, it's got your little volume controls and channel controls on the on the handpiece. So this is designed to be mounted in your truck. Mm -hmm. um, and again, with a good aerial and things and, and good conditions with good clear sight, um, 20 to 25k range. So quite a powerful uh, little radio. Mm -hmm. wow. Yeah. Um, this one here. This, this one here. This is a, a little bonus pack that we're actually running. So what it is is. Um, it's really great for the starter up or, or anyone like that who um, wants to get a bit of gear in their truck and, and uh, that sort of gives you everything you need. So this is a, a slightly bigger radio, um, again it's a, another 80 channel 5 watt output but nice um, powerful good steel case robust radio, uh, digital display, uh, full 5 watt output. Um, but it comes in a little bonus pack so what you actually get is everything you need to get started in your truck. So you get a um, an aerial, you get what they call a, a ground independent base, so that lets you put the aerial anywhere you like on the truck, yep. and a nice spring there as well, so uh, good and robust if you're bushing, bush yeah. bashing and things like that. So, snap off. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, and they're a, they're a great little value product, those ones as well. So, um, yeah. So, and we have the whole range, as you can see. We've we've got a, a good range of AM radios as well, um, aerials, accessories. Um, so yeah, there's a, a fair, fair few there to choose from. Oh, awesome. Well, if you guys are interested in getting some uh, radio equipment, get in touch with the boys from Ironman and I'll sort you out. After the break, we meet the instructors from the Boyle River Camp and we share a meal with the locals at the Wheat Chief Tavern. Welcome back to rural New Zealand. All right, it's time to head up to the Southern Alps and check out what they're doing at the Boyle River. I would say it's a combination of just the location about where we are, it's just so unique with what's out and around here, but also the philosophies that it has behind it. Like it's all about developing the young student through activities rather than using the activities just for the sake of using them. I just love how there's just everything is so isolated and you can just be outside and do awesome things with awesome people and like the office <laughs> is, is amazing. Sweet, yeah. and what, what would be one of your favourite sort of activities to do here? Um, love rock climbing and doing bush stuff with the kids, doing bush skills and um, water like tubing and canyoning. It's, it's a really fun place to work, like the, the other staff are really cool. It's, it's well organised, Wendy and David always have things set up really well so you know you're walking into somewhere that's, that's good to go. Uh, when I step out of the house each morning and I look around 
the mountains out here and it's like, wow, you know, it's such a beautiful environment to work in. Uh, and then we come down and we're working with the students and it's really nice to see that positive change that, that we make in the young people. Uh, they, um, I think we, when they leave here, they, they have a bit of realization of what they're capable of and they've learned some things about themselves and about uh, working with other people. And uh, it's great to see the change. What, they just really enjoy the wide open spaces, getting out of the city and just um, being able to have a little bit of freedom and really just see that coming out in them after a few days. And uh, what would be your favourite activity? My favourite activity would be the journey day. So it's a day we spend out, just, we just plan a journey and we fit in a whole lot of things along the way. And uh, we get to see a lot of beautiful places and take them to some of our favourite places. And we kind of can kind of shape it to the group what's going to work for them and they'll get the most out of it. I'd love to have a job as an outdoor instructor. Right, it's time for us to go have a meal at the Wheat Chief Tavern. We're here in Littleton Harbour and we're going to go meet with Susan from the Wheat Chief Tavern. Come on. Oh, Susan, down here at the Wheat Chief. It's yep. a pretty lovely place. So how did how'd you end up here? Um, actually, a friend of mine purchased it, went to auction, and the auction date was wrong in the blue book and she happened to be there and I was actually sh shopping at the supermarket and um, she stopped the auction at a pretty good price and then there was me and another couple and I ended up getting it yeah. and been here nine years since. Oh wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. and enjoying it? Yeah, it is good. <laughs> it's, it's a big job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. looking after the riffraff behind you. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what's the bit of history of this place? Obviously it was fairly new. Um, was there an old, older hotel? There was. The Wheat Chief burnt down in 86 and it was rebuilt then. And the only uh, original piece of the building was the front bar. But that was actually quite low down so they built that up because of flooding. And the rest of it's new. Yeah. It's not much like the old building. There is pictures of the old building. Yeah, yeah. And um, one thing you do specialise here is your meals. You even have a special meal on, on Thursday nights, is that right? Yep, yep. We do a roast night on Thursday for the locals, just get a few people in. And we do two roasts, you can have them here or take away $25, so it's a good price. It's affordable for people to have a night out, you know, and they can have a couple of drinks if they're having a roast while they're here. So, no, it's going well. And you must have a few clients from Diamond Harbour and stuff like that? Yeah, Diamond Harbour, you get a few in, and local round, we haven't got a lot of houses in Teddington. But yep. the people that are here are pretty supportive of the Wheat Chief. So in the summertime, you've got a nice big green lawn out there. Imagine that gets pretty packed. Yeah, no, it does. It's good, and we get a lot of um, bikes through and bits and pieces. They're really supportive of the place. It's good for families. People bring their dogs here on the leash, and they quite like the fact that their dog can be here as well as they are, as long as they're outside. And kids, it's a good, good wee spot, family spot. It's, it's great. Yeah, do you get many people coming over from Christchurch? Yeah, you do, especially the summertime. The summertime sells itself. Thanks for joining us in rural New Zealand. I certainly hope you enjoyed the show. Just remember to like us on Facebook, and if you have missed an episode, you can watch it on demand. Catch you guys next time when we go on another amazing adventure. See you then. Thank you.